Okay, um, we're going to totally switch gears from probability and talk about some ideas that were discussed way back in Algebra 1 um, that you may have forgotten. Okay, we'll talk about the difference between categorical and quantitative data. Um, we'll talk about how to display categorical data. Okay, by the end of this video, I hope you're able to identify if a variable is either categorical or quantitative. Um, you should also use should be able to use categorical data to draw a bar chart or a pie chart. Um, you should also be able to answer questions about the data when you're given a bar chart or a pie chart. Okay, um, variables like I mentioned before can either be categorical or quantitative. Okay, categorical meaning it has categories, which is why it's called categorical. Okay, for example, color of M&Ms. I do that a lot, don't I? Um, color of M&Ms, um, class of student, like junior, senior, freshman, sophomore, um, skill level, low, medium, high. If, if what you're asking people about or collecting data on has to, can be broken up into categories, uh, it would be categorical. Okay, Quantitative would be things that are, um, have numbers with units. Okay, So the speed of a car is on the street. Um, number of high school students at Kinnick High School is quantitative because it's number of students. Price of an iPod is, is quantitative because there's units of money. Okay? When trying to decide if something is categorical or quantitative, um, these are some, some questions that might be useful. One, is there a specific order? And two, does it make sense to average them? Okay, so could you do math with these numbers? Um, if so, then it would be quantitative. Okay, so are the following variables quantitative or categorical? So the price of lunch um, is an amount, and that amount is in money, and so it is quantitative. You know what? I'm going to keep quantitative, okay? Hours on Facebook, um, it's hours, and so it's quantitative. Football position would be quarterback or you know offense, defense. Um, those are all in different categories based on how you want to separate that. It's a categorical data. Um, grade in school, like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. I'm sorry, no, grades. Grades is in like um, 4.0, 3.5, 3.0, 2.5. Uh, those grades um, really can be either thought of as quantitative or categorical. Depends on how you think of it. Um, usually it's quantitative, you're looking at GPAs, um, but if you're looking at A, B, C, D, that would be, they'd be in categories. Um, I had a student uh, last year who talked about uh, doing a project dealing with grades, um, and her variable was, did you make the honor roll or not? And that's like a categorical thing dealing with grades. Um, your favorite number, although it's a number, there's no units to it, and the fact that a, a student chose a four and a three, and um, it wouldn't make sense to average favorite numbers, so I'd consider that categorical. Um, the other thing that, that comes up, um, that comes to mind is um, like a, a part number, if, you're, if there's some kind of a, an, an item that has an, an, an item number on it, it doesn't make sense to average item numbers, it's really a, a categorical number that happens to be a number. So favorite numbers, um, I'm also going to write in here um, an item number. would be a categorical, even though it's a, it's a number, it doesn't have units. Okay, um, displaying categorical data. Now, in our textbook, it talks about this example about on the Titanic. Um, this is the, the, the number breakdown of the people in different classes, first class, second class, third class, on the crew for the, the Titanic. Okay. Um, we can look at this, a frequency table has the, the categories listed here and also has the counts, the frequencies, um, how often that happened. Now, a relative frequency is looking at percentages. So the classes are still the same. They're still first, second, third um, crew. But the relative frequencies are percentages. So I will um, add up all of these and I will find there were 2,201 people on the Titanic. 
Okay, so the relative frequency, the percentage of people in first class, were 325 divided by 2201, and we get, um, I'll say, 14.77 percent were in first class. 285 out of 2201 is 12.95% were in, in second class. 32.08 were in third class. And 40. Point, um, two one we're in the crew. Okay, so relative frequency has um, percentages. Okay, now a bar chart. Uh, we use bar charts when we are more interested in showing how many in each category there are um, than the proportion. Okay, so first class, second class, third class, class crew. Although this order makes sense, there's no really reason why we couldn't have it in like the other order to go um, crew, third, second, first class, or that we go um, third, second, first, and then crew. Like this order, it doesn't have to be in this order, which is an indicator that we're dealing with a categorical data. Also, um, the most important thing about this graph that I want to point out is these gaps. These gaps are, are really important, okay? There's, um, because they're in categories, um, we leave gaps in between the bars, which is why it's called a bar chart, is because there are gaps. Whenever you're dealing with categorical data and you're making a bar chart, um, you must leave gaps in between them. That's a huge difference between these graphs and histograms. Okay, a relative frequency bar chart we can also make, um, except now we have a relative frequency or percentages on our y-axis instead of um, counts or the frequency. Again, there are um, gaps in between the bars because we're dealing with categorical data. Okay, um, let's actually make one. Um, I just pulled this data out of a textbook. Um, the number of birthdays uh, in each month. So 15 in January, 10 in February, 5 in March, and 20 in April. I have no idea um, what this is of, because birthdays and, and of who these birthdays are. but we will do the frequency over here. Okay, I'm taking mine and I'm going to rotate it. Okay, frequency over here. And I will kind of make a scale going from 0 to 20. Now, your graphs don't always have to start at 0, um, but usually it makes sense to do so, unless um, you're dealing with a specific part of the graph where zero doesn't make sense in, in, the, in the context, okay? Zero, 20, this would be 10, 15, 5, okay? The bars we have down here is January, February, March, April, okay? And we're dealing with bars, so the first one is 15, now, I would usually use a, a ruler to make these nicer, but um, it's a little difficult on this. February, March is 5, and April is 20. Okay. Now, we use a bar chart again. We want to talk about um, how many there are in each category. Um, We'll talk later on in the year about distributions, meaning kind of how, how the numbers in different categories relate. Um, now, you wouldn't want to talk about distributions a whole lot with categorical data or bar charts because the order that we've chosen here um, is not any particular. We could have it in the reverse order or have an or descending order where it goes April, January, February, March if we wanted to. Um, the order isn't set. Okay, pie charts. Um, pie charts show the, show the whole group um, as, of cases as a circle. Okay, so the, the circle represents all the people that were on the Titanic. Okay, um, and the pie chart is, is used when we want to talk about the proportion of the fraction to the whole circle in each category. Okay, um, and so the angles are proportional to, um, to to how many are in each piece, okay? Now, just we'll use this in a second, but the angle here is going to be the relative frequency in 
in decimal times 360 all the way around. So it's, it's that percentage or that fraction of the whole circle times 360 will give us the angle. Now, when I was in college, uh, my, uh, my professor for statistics was actually a, a retired statistician. He did statistics his whole career. Um, and he had the personal belief that pie charts are overused, um, at least in, in you know, the, the real world. Um, that pie charts are used way more often than they should. Um, he was a huge advocate of bar charts, personally. Um, I think that, that when they're, you're specifically wanting to represent a part of the whole, it's fine. But he had the belief that it usually kind of skews numbers. You can't really tell as clearly um, which one's bigger, which one's greater. You can also use color to um, deceive the reader a bit more with, with pie charts than you can on bar charts. Um, anyway. And next slide. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> now let's actually take this data and make it into a bar chart. Okay, um, again, the relative frequency times 360. Now there were, let's see here, 15 plus 10 plus 5 plus 20 is there were 50 people. Okay, so in January, 15 out of 50 is 30%. Point three zero, um, February is point two zero, March is point one, April is point four. Let me just do it in tenths. Okay, now we'll take the relative frequency in decimals and multiply by three sixty. So point three times three sixty is one hundred eight. Okay, so the central angle for this will be one hundred eight. I will draw a well. You get my protractor. I know this will impress a lot of you. Oh. You know what? I thought you used a straight edge. I guess the, the, ruler, the ruler is the only one. Okay. There's this. And then we would take our protractor. And we measure it from there. 108 degrees. 108 degrees would be 108 about right here so I draw 108 okay and then 0 0.2 times 360 <clears throat> is 72 so then rotate my protractor okay measure 72 which would be right about here <clears throat> Point 0.1 times 360 is 36. I go from my new line. My new line. <clears throat> 36. Oops. Thirty-six. Okay. Delete. Okay. So this is January, February, March, and what's left is April. Okay. Now I'm personally in agreement that that a a, <clears throat> a bar chart probably is what we want here. Um, the numbers that are in each category, not so much the distribution, is what we're really interested in in a situation like this, but I thought I'd use it just to show you how to make um, pie charts. So we won't spend a lot of time making pie charts in this class, um, but just so you can know what they are. Okay, um, take a few minutes and summarize. We talked about categorical data um, a lot and kind of summarize the main ideas in this in this lesson, and then go on and try the practice problems.